Hello everyone, today we will learn about CSS Flexbox that makes it easier to design flexible responsive layout and it can be structured without using float or positioning. First, we will start with Flexbox elements. So let's take a dive inside another dive. Now to start using Flexbox model, first you need to define a class. So uh, first we will take one, two, three elements. Now we'll define a class named as Flex Container. Flex uh, container. Now we will link the CSS. Okay, so we are linking the CSS. Uh, okay. Now we will style the el uh, class element flex container. So uh, the flex container becomes flexible if we set the display property to flex. So we'll display it as flex. Now we will set the background color as uh, background color as red. Now we will set the div element of the flex container class to. Okay, so now we will take background color as yellow. Okay, now we will we can set the margin or padding or font size to make the code easier, and we can understand better. So let's take padding as one em and font size one point five am. Okay, now we will go through with the flex container properties. First, we will learn about flex direction. It defines which direction in the property wants to stack the flex item. So we will define the flex direction as column flex direction is okay. Column. So the possible values are column, column reverse row, and row reverse, as you can see in the screen. Now we will go through with the flex flow property. It is a shorthand property for setting body flex direction and flex wrap property. In this, we will cover the flex wrap property as well. So for this, we have to take more dice so that you can understand the code better. Okay, so five, six, and we will have another dive to seven. Okay. Now we will uh, define it flex flow as. Uh, in this, you can see the seventh element is wrapped inside the dive element. Now we will uh, set it as flex flow row, and when you set it as row, you will see that the seventh element is out of the dive, and it's not the wrap inside the dive element. So we will set it as wrap to, and you can see the seventh element comes inside the dive element. Now we will go through with the justify content property. Uh, this property is used to align the flex items. For this, uh, we will take only one die so that it makes code easier. Now we will define justify content as center. So let's take it and uh, justify content center. Okay. Now as you can see in the output, it's aligned to the center. The flex item is aligned to the center. Now we will go. The possible values are on the screen now. And now we will go through with the align items property. It, this property is used to align the flex items. For this, we have to increase the height so that you can understand the code better. Okay. We will increase the height of the dive element. Uh, okay. After that, we will uh, align items. Align items as center. And then you can see in the output, it aligned to the center of the dive. Okay, now the possible values are center, flex start, flex run, stretch, and baseline. Stretch is the by default value. Okay, now we will go through with the align content property. So this property is used to align the flex items. Okay, for this we have to take more dice. Uh, so we will take more dice. Okay. Now we will set as one, two, and three. Four, okay, five, then six, and then seventh time. Okay, now we will set the align content. So let's style the CSS. Okay, align. Okay, first we will set the flex wrap. Uh, okay, and after that we will align the content. As center, okay. Now, as you can see in the output, the dive elements are set, aligned to the center of the code. Okay, so 
that's for today's guys we will continue